Hello Comic Book World. This is Panology number 27. My name is Earl Gray. Today I want to talk about these two books here. Cromwell Stone and Azteken, both written and drawn by Andreas. That's the short artist name for uh, Andreas Martens. Born 1951 in a town nearby Dresden in the former German Democratic Republic, East Germany. Uh, he is a bit older now than on this picture. He studied comic art in Brussels. Uh, the Belgian and Fra French people, they understand the importance of comics, so you can uh, study comics in there. He did it with a uh, great success, uh, and today he's a very well-known comic artist, even though he's not one of the prolific once he puts very much time and work in his uh, comics so his publications are not so many uh today it's a bit i i don't know if it makes so much sense to do a review in uh, english but i do it anyway because Andreas books weren't nearly available in English. Cromwell Stone, there is um, a pub, uh, an edition in, from Dark Horse done in the 90s, but at Steken, I don't think there is any uh, English edition of the story here. Yeah. And that's a pity. Um, yeah, my my uh, books here are published by Carlson Lux in the early 90s and this book here is a very new one from this year, 2014 published by Schreiber und Leser. And uh, it captured my interest from the very beginning when I stood in the comic book shop and opened it up and saw a page like this. I mean, you can flip through this book and you have this amazing art topped by double page spreads I mean we are talking uh, about the European format which is uh, oversized at least from uh, an American point of view it's insane um, art full of details if comic book artists were paid by the amount of ink and lines they are using Andrea certainly will be uh, a millionaire Look at this page for an example. It's a bit like the art from M.C. Escher, this Dutch dude 
who drew amazing stuff. Yeah, I have one uh, book with some art of his. And uh, you take M.C. Escher and put the and and step the pedal to the ground, go in overdrive, and you have um, the art of Andreas plus through on um, maybe a little of uh, the influence of Francois Coyton, for an example and the book illustration art of the 19th century. There's wood carving uh, prints and There are many, many panel, uh, panels that you can just look at for the joy of looking at the details um, and forget about the story for a second, um, especially when it comes to these giant pictures over two pages. Crazy stuff indeed, my friends. And I didn't have tell you anything about the story already and I don't want to talk too much about it, but it's a uh, Strange Bastard of Edgar Allan Poe meets H.P. Lovecraft meets um, 19th century um, uh, mythology, um, magic. Uh, believings, magical believings, uh, or, uh, the way the folks in the 19th and early 20th century believed in magic, that's uh, driving in a way the story, but in a very interesting and, and, and way. Maybe you can say it's gothic in a way, the take Techniques and the mediums of transport are a bit ahead of this mindset. There are airplanes and such, and uh, relatively modern trains. So maybe the you can say it's a bit steampunk here. There are aliens. There's a crazy Big Bang theory going on about the origin of life. You have everything and it's it's not uh, so eclectic as it sounds. It's very fitting and atmospheric and quite poignant um, there is a, a quote by H.P. Lovecraft in the beginning. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And this fear is very touchable in the, in the story. Uh, at least in the first two parts of the book and it doesn't deal with too many monsters here you don't see 
monsters or, or creatures of the darkness uh, for pages you don't see them you just see the fear of the protagonists and oh yeah and you see very very much other things you won't believe very good book um, did I mention that this book, um, although that it's from uh, this year, the stories within are from the 90s and 2004. So now a quick view look at the second book, Aztecan, Aztecs. It deals with different characters and their life in the last days before and years before the Spanish emperors um, arrived in uh, South America. These stories uh, that are told here are connected in a way that's not very easy to follow. I mean, uh, uh, Cromwell Stone is also not in every uh, on every page very easy to follow, but you can follow it if you try. It's uh, it's a difficult but very rewarding read. With this book, I'm not so sure. Um, it maybe it tries too much in two, on too uh, few pages to tell the culture of a folk of people that are gone from different sides and angles. Uh, here you have a look on Tenochtitlan, uh, the, the former Mexico City. I, it's quite nice. Uh, and and uh, on top of it, you have very l few words. Uh, it's for many panels a silent comic. Okay, here yeah, not, um, but maybe maybe sometimes one word or two would have been not so bad to understand this better. I mean. Uh, it's in German, and I, I'm German, and I can read many English comics very, uh, very better than this one, and maybe this, this says something. But it's a very uh, fine book overall, and I, I'm complaining on a very high level. And just as you see the art here, the art is amazing. And I don't understand why this thing isn't published in English. So, as I said in some of my videos, as to Lustal and Scoyton, too, even though if the books by Francois Scoyton are published in from NBM or by NBM, but uh, there are not so many uh, editions out there. How this these comic artists would have deserved it. Um, apply some pressure <laughs> on your publishers to at least to look at the works of Andreas and maybe we can create a fan base that's big enough to to inspire an edition an English edition of this wonderful book here okay I'm starting to ramble, but that should 
should not be nothing new. Uh, for those of you who found some language errors in my speaking, you can you can take it with you. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for listening and watching. Goodbye.